Hi all, it's Steve again. Uh, last time we spoke we were looking at how to make our picture a little bit better and uh, this time I'm going to talk about sound. Uh, it's really important that you can be heard clearly when you're in an online meeting or when you're recording a lecture or something. Um, so what I'm going to do is take you through a range of microphones. I'm not saying buy this one or buy that one. I'm just going to go through a range of microphones let you hear what they sound like. Before you record any sound, have a quick listen to the room that you're intending to record in. If it's, if it's got no carpets and it's got bare walls, it might sound a wee bit kind of ringy and echoey and that won't sound so great. If that's the case, if that's the only room you can record in, you can scatter some cushions around, you could put down a couple of rugs if you have them, you can even hang up a duvet cover out of shot or in shot and that'll soak up quite a bit of sound. As you can see behind me, I've got some uh, sound treatment panels on the walls. You don't really need to go that far, but I'll put a link in the description anyway so you can see those. I've also got something called bass traps in the corners, which stop low frequency sound from bouncing around the room. You probably won't need those either. The first thing you can do in an online meeting is plug in a pair of headphones. What that stops is the sound coming out of your laptop being picked up again by your microphone and adding to the sound in the meeting. You can sometimes hear your own voice repeated back on someone else's computer and what's happening there is they've got their speakers up quite loud and their microphone's picking you up again. So I have this cheap pair of Sennheiser headphones. If you plug those in, at least you won't be contributing to the noise in the meeting. I'm going to read a passage from a book and just so that we've got a baseline, let's listen to the recording from the microphone built into this MacBook Pro. Phobos spun on the time of Earth, for the ancient conquerors of that moonlit of Mars had adjusted its rotation to suit their imperial convenience. They had clad its dead stone with living green and wrapped it in artificial air and ruled the planets like captive islands from its palaces. Now another comparison would be the built-in microphone on my webcam here, which is a Logitech C920. So let's listen to the microphone on the Logitech. Phobos spun on the time of Earth, for the ancient conquerors of that moonlit of Mars had adjusted its rotation to suit their imperial convenience. They had clad its dead stone with living green and wrapped it in artificial air and ruled the planets like captive islands from its palaces. Microphones and laptops and webcams aren't very good. Even if you have a separate webcam with its own microphone, it won't be any better than the one that's in your laptop. So let's try plugging in some different microphones and see how they sound. These range from very cheap to quite expensive, and you can decide for yourself at which level it makes enough of a difference to spend money first microphone I'm demonstrating today is this one. It costs £12.99 on Amazon. It's made by Gavazla. I don't know how to pronounce that. But this microphone here, it's got quite a short cable. Uh, let's hear how it sounds. Phobos spun on the time of Earth, for the ancient conquerors of that moonlit of Mars had adjusted its rotation to suit their imperial convenience. They had clad its dead stone with living green and wrapped it in artificial air, and ruled the planets like captive islands from its palaces. The next microphone I've chosen to demonstrate is one that's made by a company called Boya, and this is a bit special, this microphone. It's got an incredibly long cable, so if you need to do something away from the camera, you can get further away. The downside of this one is you actually need to have a microphone input on your computer, one of these to plug it into. It does actually have a special button on it here, so you can use it with your smartphone as well. That makes this really useful. Uh, if you want to do demonstrations or such on your smartphone, you can be quite a distance away and get really good sound. So let's listen to this boyer. Phobos spun on the time of Earth, for the ancient conquerors of that moonlit of Mars had adjusted its rotation to suit their imperial convenience. They had clad its dead stone with living green and wrapped it in artificial air and ruled the planets like captive islands from its palaces. 
next step up from a microphone is a complete headset. I use this Sennheiser, kind of like an office headset all the time. The advantage of that is that the headphones and microphone are in one unit. It's comfy to wear all day and it's got a really good quality microphone. Let's hear it. Phobos spun on the time of Earth, for the ancient conquerors of that moonlit of Mars had adjusted its rotation to suit their imperial convenience. They had clad its dead stone with living green, and wrapped it in artificial air, and ruled the planets like captive islands from its palaces. If you need to do a demonstration where you need to be away from the laptop and you don't necessarily want a cable dragging after you, you'll have to think about wireless microphones. Now there's plenty of Bluetooth options out there. Uh, you can work 10-15 feet away quite happily and the sound will be good. I'm demoing these, uh, ro this Rode Wireless Go system. It's quite expensive but I don't have a Bluetooth microphone to demonstrate. The other thing with this Wireless Go is you actually do need to have an audio input on your computer as well. It doesn't work by Bluetooth or wireless or USB. You have to plug it in. So if you don't have an audio input, maybe the Bluetooth microphone might be the best option. Phobos spun on the time of Earth, for the ancient conquerors of that moonlit of Mars had adjusted its rotation to suit their imperial convenience. They had clad its dead stone with living green and wrapped it in artificial air, and ruled the planets like captive islands from its palaces. The next step up you could take is to buy a dedicated podcasting microphone. There's absolutely tons of these available. Lots of them are USB, so the advantage of that is you can just plug it straight into your computer. You don't have to worry about audio inputs. I'm using a RED 5 RV6 here, which is slightly different. This is not a USB microphone. I'm actually plugged into an audio interface, which I'll show on the screen just now. This is a bit excessive. I'm using this as a demonstration because I don't have a desktop USB podcasting microphone, but I'll put a link to a few in the description. Phobos spun on the time of Earth, for the ancient conquerors of that moonlit of Mars had adjusted its rotation to suit their imperial convenience. They had clad its dead stone with living green, and wrapped it in artificial air, and ruled the planets like captive islands from its palaces. Phobos spun on the time of Earth, for the ancient conquerors of that moonlit of Mars had adjusted its rotation to suit their imperial convenience. They had clad its dead stone with living green, and wrapped it in artificial air, and ruled the planets like captive islands from its palaces. It's really important that you can be heard clearly if you're recording an online lecture or you're in a meeting. So it might well be worth upgrading your sound using one of the options we've shown today. I hope that's been helpful. In the next video, I'm going to look at how to show yourself and what you're doing on the screen at once. And I'll also cover how to stream live. So I'll see you in the next one.